What's up, y'all? AJ Simmons here with another great interview for you guys. Today, I have Miss Katrina Johnson up here. How you doing, Miss Katrina? How you doing, AJ? It's a pleasure to finally be on your platform. You know, Absolutely. I've been watching your videos for a long time, ever since 2017. So, you know, I've seen your growth, you know, um, from when you first started off with the franchises and then you went on to uh, doing what you're doing now, man, and big ups. Because, you know, you're saving a lot of lives. You're helping a lot of people out with, with your movement. I appreciate that. I truly appreciate that. And talk about growth. We're going to get to it in a minute. But I saw your YouTube channel, and I know you up to something over there. So we're going to talk about that. But first, <laughs> let's start it off with the traditional. Paint the picture for us. Tell us about who you were before you started your cleaning company. And, and uh, you know, what were you doing before you even got started? Okay. Um, before I actually started my cleaning company, I was actually in the music industry. Um, I used to manage artists and I used to promote for the uh, big events that came to our city. So after I finished, I wanted to just be done with the music stuff. Um, I just said, why not start a cleaning business? Well, I mean, not, not start the cleaning business, but I said, um, I, I, I started to get a job. I wanted to go out and find a job. Um, so I, I was a housekeeper. I started to clean. I worked for a franchise and all my jobs were cleaning jobs. So while I was working those cleaning jobs, I would listen to podcasts and on how to, uh, build your own cleaning company because, Hey, working three jobs, I'm working three jobs at one time and I was only making $600 a week. So, you know, if that didn't piss me off, I don't know. I don't know what did, you know, so um, sometimes it takes, you know, hard times for you to wake up and say, hey, something got to give, you know, so that's basically what made me start. Okay, okay. Now, what made you actually decide to start the cleaning company? Um, what made me actually want to just go ahead and start, I actually started my business in 2018, and what made me actually just want to start was I just realized that the, the, the economy and it was hard for me to find a job, you know, that there, there was no working for someone else is no growth. You know what I mean? A lot of times they'll give you like, they'll say they'll give you a, a dollar raise, but what the hell really is a dollar raise or back in our day, we used to get like 10 cent raises. And, you know, I remember the, the manager would be like, Hey, you got a 50 cent raise or whatever and people would go oh yeah 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 but when you get older you see man that's not helping it, it doesn't help you know so um me being a single mother five kids something had to give you know um so i lost my spouse in 2017 and that was like a wake-up call like i really really had to get out there and get on the grind and make some real money because i have five kids and and they they won a lot, <laughs> so um, I I had more experience in the cleaning business than any any other business, you know. And I just felt like uh, me working these jobs, man, I'm never going to get ahead. I was only getting five hours of sleep a day, you know, working three jobs, and I felt like I was never ever going to get ahead if I don't do something do something quick, you know. Um, Every, every month, like I tell my kids, it's a holiday. <laughs> I said, I, I got a problem with America because every month it's, it's a freaking holiday. And I felt like, you know, we, I, I, I have to I keep issuing money out, you know, every month. And when you have kids, it really starts to get to you because it's like they want, you have to buy Easter dresses, it's Easter time. You, you know, St. Patrick's Day, you out buying all this green shit for, for St. Patrick's Day. You know, uh, Father's Day, you got Mother's Day, you know, all of this stuff. So I say, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to start a business. Because now I can capitalize off of capitalism, you know. Um, so every month I have a sale. <laughs> and I told my graphic guy to, um, to make a flyer for every holiday. So we have 10% off Mother's Day, we have 15% off Father's Day or whatever, I come up with something. But I had to figure out a way to switch it around, 
you know, instead of me issuing out all this money, let's make some money off of these holidays. So no. I started the business. That was another reason why I started the business, you know. Okay. It's funny you mentioned that about the uh, the holidays because I always, I'm always telling people like, y'all know that that's just marketing, right? Big corporations, they, they want you to have so many holidays so you can always have a reason Valentine's Day. Your know, anniversary, every day is somebody's birthday, you know. But anyway, right? I won't preach right. on that. They always have preach too much, but um, but it's what true. I was doing, it, is, it really is. It you really get is. tired of them getting in your pockets every holiday, every month. They in your pockets, you know. So you got to figure out a way to kind of switch it around. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So. <laughs> you, you said you had a graphic guy as a, like yeah. as a new business. How did you go about finding that? Um, I found my graphic guy. I actually used the same guy that I was using when I was in the music industry and he used to do all of my flyers and stuff when we were doing that. So I, I just kept the same guy, you okay. know, and I found him through, like I had him ever since 08. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I heard you mentioned Fiverr in one of your videos, so I wanted to see if that you... Oh yeah, of... we definitely, we definitely use Fiverr as well. Okay. You know, you can find some really, really good people on Fiverr. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, now you started in residential, right? Yeah, I actually started off in residential. Um, I got my first residential client off of Craigslist. Yeah, off of Craigslist. Um, this was back when Craigslist was free. I actually just uh, I I got four Craigslist accounts in the beginning, four Craigslist accounts, and I would market on Craigslist every day off of each account because you know you can't like keep on doing it they'll um delete it <laughs> but um every day i would market on it i would go in the um household section and the moving section and those two i would just keep marketing in those two and one day i just i finally got someone and we still got that client to this day you know. I heard you say that in your video the other day. You were saying to put it in the moving section. I was like, that's genius. I don't know why I never thought of it. I kept putting it in the small business section. I'm just blending Yeah, a lot of people do that. They'll put it in the, in the small business. But I swear to God, if you go to the moving section where everybody markets moving, uh, you know, moving, moving uh, the move out section, you know, there's no cleaners in that section. <laughs> I swear, it's, it's never a lot of cleaners in there. I'm, I'm usually the only cleaner that I see. I don't really see a lot in there, you know? So that's just pointers for anybody that looking for move in, move out cleaning. That's huge. And so would that, you say that, that so would you say that that has been, Absolutely. Would you say that's been the number one uh, way that you've gotten clients for residential so far going forward or did you find other ways? Um, going forward, I would say my number one way for getting clients was referrals, word of mouth, word of mouth. I've been surviving off of word of mouth ever since we got started. Like it's been, been nonstop. Somebody will refer us and it'll just, I wouldn't even have to promote. <laughs> it'll just keep going, 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 going. So I would say word of mouth. I try to provide the best quality possible. Um, give the best value possible to each client and they love our service so they always refer us I ask for referrals I usually give free cleanings for referrals and that's how we've been surviving that's like the number one way we've been surviving there's tons of ways you can get uh, clients though absolutely okay now you were cleaning were you already cleaning houses before you joined clean business network um yeah yeah, I was cleaning houses. I actually started cleaning houses with my mom long time ago. I was probably 13 years old out doing houses with her, but she never did it as a business. She did it as a side hustle, you know, but I just saw, hey, we could turn this into a business. You know, it could be a really, really lucrative business being that you can make $100 in like two hours versus you know, a job, it's going to be hard to get $100 out of a job. They're going to try to work you eight whole hours, you know, to get $100. So I saw that immediately in the cleaning business. Definitely. Now, what made you join us if you were pretty much already in business? Because you never stop learning. You know, um, I've joined a lot of uh, cleaning business groups, you know, as far as the cleaning business. 
but um, I think I gravitated more to your page because I, I kind of felt like it was authentic. And, um, you know, I just love your message. When you came off, you wasn't so salesy. You know, you know, a lot of times we think of people always trying to scam and get over on you and stuff like that. But I never, I never got that vibe with you. I never felt like, you know, you were trying, I really felt like you were a really genuine person that was really just giving and trying to give as much um, value as possible to the community. Um, and that's why I decided to sign up. You know, I, I, I don't usually just go for anything, but I, I gravitated towards your channel. So you, you got something special if you got me. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. And um, all right, so let's talk about how you got your first commercial client. Oh, okay. Um, I went through your G lead generation service, um, Clean Biz uh, Network. That's that's how I got my first commercial cleaning, and it was I did the walkthrough, and I still have that client too. You know, it, it was smooth sailing. They were like, um, I, I guess I sold myself to them. You know, when I came in there, I talked to them, and they showed me around, and I asked them, you know, what their pain was, what was the the main thing that you guys you know, um, they, what did the other cleaners not do and stuff like that, you know, and they were, they were talking about the baseboards and how they didn't do com computers and they didn't really dust off the keys and whatever. And I just sold myself to the, to the clients and we still have those clients to this day. So shout out to Clean Biz Network. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, and that was, that was a coincidence. I didn't plan that. Y'all know y'all probably thinking he already knew that. Actually, I didn't. So. I'm glad that that's what the answer that was the answer though. But anyway, um, yeah. all right. So I saw that you were featured in the newspaper, and you yeah. uh, you shouted me out. I appreciate that. But um, how? So how did you go about getting featured in the newspaper? Um, I was actually cleaning a client's house at the time, and you know, I I was just having a conversation with her, telling her about my story and how I started and she was asking me questions or whatnot as I was cleaning. And then she told me that um, she worked for Savannah Morning News. And she said, would you like for, she said, well, do you mind me doing a story on you, on your, on, in your company and your growth? And I said, well, go ahead, I don't mind, you know? Um, we got so many clients off of that one newspaper article. It was amazing you know um i was surprised because we got we got clients that were out of town an hour away i'm like well, wow and, and i knew when the when the article came out because my phone was ringing like crazy and i'm like oh my gosh i, I wasn't even prepared for that much work that came in so you know and she didn't want anything in return she was just being genuine man and she wanted to help help a sister out so yeah, yeah i got up. that from, i got it from a client Mm -hmm. And I always feel like if you put good energy out there, it's going to come back to you. I think that's a prime example of it, too. So Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I didn't even, I wasn't even looking for it, but, you know, that's just how the universe works. Absolutely. Now, mm -hmm. let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about some of the bad news, all right? So let's talk about some of the struggles you face uh, coming through your business. I saw your video again. I'm going to keep plugging your video because your YouTube channel is great. So, but I saw the video where you were saying some common mistakes. Uh, that new business owners make. So can you kind of share some of those things that you went through? Yeah, I would say the the main mistake that I made in business was getting business loans. And if anybody's interested in getting business loans and getting an investor and all that stuff, I had all of that in the beginning, my first year in business. And you got to keep in mind that your first year in business, you a baby. You don't you don't know how much the business want needs you know you really don't know you don't know how much your payroll is going to be you know so i just jumped out there i I started working i was getting excited because i the money was coming in but me coming from the projects not knowing how to manage money you can't go from zero to making six figures and <laughs> and not know how to manage that money you know so that's what happened to me that was my struggle i, I was dealing with um trying to manage money and never had managed that amount of money before in my life and dealing with my family on top of that wanting you know wanting me to buy them stuff and you know kids they they want 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 especially my daughters they in my ear they want the nails done hair done they want to look like cardi b 
But um, I, they have to realize that in the beginning, you can't just, I know you see a $2,000 check. That is not my money. I heard you say that one time in a video. Like, no, that's not your money. That's the business's money. And my family just seemed to not understand that, you know, especially in the beginning. You know, my mom asking for money, my kids asking for money, and I'm trying to balance business and uh, family at the same time. So I got loans because my, um, my clients were paying me late. And that's another thing. You have to make sure you got to stay on top of your invoices and stuff because, and you got to make sure that you're compliant because a lot of times you'll fall out of compliance and then they'll say, oh, we can't pay you. And you're like, what? And you got employees to pay and all that. So now I'm cleaning houses and trying to get these people paid. And oh, I was all over the place, all over the place. So I end up getting business loans and as quick as my business grew, it started to fall. It, it, I mean, I, I, I got up to, I started my business in March of 2018. By the time March 2019 came, I was grossing 10000 And then it went up from there. And as soon as it got up to like 15000 I remember it like it was yesterday. It just started to <laughs> slowly fall because of the money management and the, um, the shark lenders. They were taking like probably about $300 a day out of my account, you know, and it was just it was like oh gosh let's, whew, how am I going to get out of this so um that was one of the main one of the one of the biggest problems that I had my very first year in business was getting loans from shark lenders I advise people just don't don't do it just if you need the money just buy oh hold up I think I lost you there okay yeah, we still heard everything so you good Okay, so yeah, if you um if you need the money, just go ahead and uh work, man. Do more units, or whatever you got to do. Get another job or whatever. But it did it didn't make sense to borrow so much and then have to pay back double. And you know the interest rates was ridiculous that you had to pay back. You know, so um yeah, that was one of the biggest biggest boo boos that I made. I never do that again. All right, I'm so glad you spoke on that though, because I remember like it was yesterday too when you emailed me about it, the situation. And you were kind of asking how would I deal with it, and right. I'm like, it's funny you asked me that because you know I got caught up with that same loan company, and it right. it, it kind of messed me up. And it's like you reminded me I got to make a video on it because I never really spoke about it publicly. And one right. of my my strategies is everything that I go through, I'm gonna share it. I might not always share it as I'm going through it at a time because it's hard enough to get through it as it is. I don't need thousands of people knowing right. you know I mean, with that extra pressure. So, but I need to go back and make the video on that because that's a huge thing. And you are a lot of people can struggle trying to go through stuff like that. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. So now oh, yeah. since you've been through it, can you share some tips on how to get through that and just money management in general? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, well, I, what I did to get out of my situation, I filed bankruptcy on that company and I started another business and I moved all my clients over to the new LLC and I just kept the party going. That's <laughs> but in a situation like that, you can't, you can't fold. You know, I know business owners that would have folded. They were like, whoa, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay all these people? And, you know, but you can't fold. You got to stay strong. You got to keep going and you got to do whatever you got to do. But one thing I won't do is go back to the way I was, you know, it could have been worse. I wasn't making no money, you know. So um, now that I've been through it, it's, I'm, I'm happy I went through it. And managing my business better, the tips I would give is um, I have to strategically plan things out daily. I don't, I used to, to ride around with my credit cards and, and stuff on me. I don't do that no more. I leave all money at home in a safe and I only take out a certain amount of money every day because, you know, you're tempted to stop and buy things. You know, my biggest thing was food because I have a big family and imagine just stopping the Burger King and stopping at Christmas. Every day you're doing that every day. 
Oh, I, I, I only take a certain amount out. So if you're hungry, you better wait till we get home. You can cook some food, you know, and I just had to start being more strict with my kids. I started to um, talk more to my family about finances and my financial situation. I want them to understand business. You know, I really need them to get in my head and understand how business is supposed to run because apparently they didn't get it in the beginning or whatnot, but they're slowly beginning to understand now how business is supposed to be ran. Um, but that was one of the main things that, that helped me out, AJ. I was just really strategic with my money spending habits. Like I, I'm very frugal right now. I don't spend a whole lot of money on food. We do more cooking now than ever. <laughs> so definitely, definitely. I appreciate that now. You mentioned your kids. So mm -hmm. you're a single parent, five kids, yeah. and you're running the business. That is amazing. So we got to hear, like, how are you even doing it? How am I doing it? Oh, God, I would say, through the grace of God. <laughs> I don't know how I'm doing it sometimes. But um, I just, like I said, I, I, I had to sit down and talk to my kids, man, about, about finances and the business more. You know what I mean? Instead of just winging everything i had to really really sit down with them and just talk to them and let them know look mommy trying to we trying to get to seven figures we trying to get somewhere in life you know i'm trying to really really build generational wealth for you guys you know if something happens to me i want to have something to pass on to you so that you don't have to ever ask somebody for a job you know we have a company there are companies out here that are seven figure they're making it why aren't we that company you know, so um, I have those conversations. I try to drill it in my family's head every day. Um, and it's, it's beginning to, they're beginning to slowly come around. And, you know, uh, they're not in my pockets as much as they were in the beginning. <laughs> I, I would say that. You know, they, they don't know you get to understand. And then I, I have to put them to work, too. Oh, you definitely, definitely. And yeah. Teach them too. <laughs> yeah, I have to put them to work. So if they want something from me, they got to do a unit for it. You know, yeah. you got to work for it. Absolutely. Now, <laughs> now we always point out the struggle and how hard it might be for you to do that. But can you point out some of the benefits of being a single parent and also running a business? The benefits would be, I would say, freedom. My freedom, when you're working a job, you're not free. So just for instance yesterday i was in a unit i was doing an inspection and school called me you know so i was able to stop doing what i'm doing and get back to it when i can get back to it you know go to the school figure out what's going on with the school and then come back to the, to the unit and finish doing what i was doing because the, the unit didn't have to be ready until the next day so i could be really really flexible so um, that's one of the benefits, I would say. My freedom, I'm free in my time. I can kind of, you know, schedule things the way I want to schedule it. Definitely, definitely. All right, well, I'm going to switch gears again. I want to mm -hmm. talk about the YouTube channel because I'm a fan. I'm a subscriber. I watch all the videos. Whenever you come out with someone, I'll be watching those too. So, And Katrina Johnson is the channel, by the way, so y'all want to go subscribe right now. But what made you start? You ain't tell me you was getting started. You ain't asked for no help. You, inbound, you just hopped up there and took off. I right? really wanted to. Um, I wish I would have started a channel when I first started my cleaning business because I really wanted to. I wanted to capture the the journey, the growth of the company because I thought about all the struggling, all the stuff that I went through my first year in the business and i said dang i should have started like early so that i can capture the growth and um the main the main reason why i wanted to grow a channel was because i wanted to inspire women just like me single mothers you know raising kids and i, I have friends that have kids and they feel like they can't be an entrepreneur because of their children or because they're a single parent or whatever but i wanted to have this channel so that people can look at what I go through. I go through the same thing. You know, I'm a, I'm a human. I'm, I'm, I'm no better than anybody else. Um, I dropped out of high school. Uh, I've been incarcerated before. Uh, I have kids. I'm a single mother. I have five kids. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm no better than anybody else. And I was able to 
take myself out of poverty, out of the projects, and grow a six-figure company. So I figure if I can do it, anybody can really do it, you know, and I don't want anyone to, I don't want anybody to feel discouraged, like they can't make it in this business, especially the cleaning business, you know, it doesn't cost much to get started in the cleaning business at all. You know, you just have to get over that, you know, hurdle of being scared to start a business. Right. Definitely. Yeah. I'm so glad you document now too, because I'm going to tell you, as you grow and you get to look back on it, it's going to be so much more fulfilling when you can watch and see where you were. So congratulations right. again when that channel started. So now I think I read in that article that you were featured in that you had a local mentor as well. Is that, yeah. am I correct? Okay. Yeah. So how did you find your mentor? Well, actually, um, it was a mentor slash investor, and I found my I found him and his wife the same way I found my um, the lady that did my the newspaper ad on us. I was a client. I had my workers over there. We were doing a construction clean, and um, one day they 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 just asked, "Hey, you would you like us to mentor you, or would you like us to like be your?" investors or whatever like because i mean i see your passion i see your tenacity like you are you really go hard and i mean that's what happens when you when you go hard stuff like that just it just gravitates to you you know it really does all you have to do is like be a genuine person and be go hard in everything you do it shows in your work like people will see it you know um so that's kind of what happened and he popped the question said hey would you would you like for us to be investors or you know help you out with your business and I said why not you know I'm a, I'm a new business or whatnot I could use all the help you never stop learning so you you definitely want to learn from people that have way more than you <laughs> so I always told my kids if you ever meet a millionaire you need to ask a million questions you know, and don't ask questions about how they get their car and all that stuff. You ask them questions about, you know, business and like, do you prefer employees or contractors or, you know. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, right. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you this, because we spoke on your kids a lot, and I just want to let you, because we're wrapping up a little bit. What would you want your legacy to be, you know, for your kids? Like, what's that final thing you would want to say to your kids um, before your time ends on this earth? Yeah, I want I I would like to be known for um women empowerment and uh, helping in the war on poverty. You know, I really I want I want my company like my long term goal for my company is to be able to turn our employees into franchise franchise owners for our company. I always thought that would be something dope. Um instead of giving them a 10 cent raise or a dollar raise, give them something that will really, really help them build wealth in their company, which will be just like you can franchise out Jam Pro and all that stuff. You know, let's build our company up uh, strong enough to become a franchise to where we can help our employees become franchisees. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I'm with you 100% on that. Now, I got to ask you that one question I ask everybody at the end of the interview. Anybody on the sideline, they're watching this video, scared to do it, they think because they got kids, they can't do it, they think because they got limited resources, they can't do it, they think because they've been locked up, they can't do it. You done told them already, but can you get a one final, a little push just to make them take some action? Yeah, you know, I, when I, I was scared too, you know, and the main thing that scared me, AJ, I'm not going to lie, it was taxes. <laughs> <laughs> that was the main reason I did not want to start no business. I said, I want I want to just keep it as a hustle because I don't want to deal with taxes or whatnot. But um, what I would say to those people is if you want to ever change your financial situation, you have to do something that you've never done before. You know, um, that's just, that's just the mindset that I had to have, you know, back, Back when I wasn't making a lot of money, I said, you know what, this year, I'm going to do everything different. Because that's the only way that you're going to see change. If You're not going to see no change if you keep taking your income tax money and buying a damn car and buying shoes and buying, you do that, if you do that every year, come on, this year you need to just do something different, you know. Um, so that's what I did, you know, the year 2018, I said, I'm going to do something totally different. And I'm just going to take a leap of faith. If you're already at rock bottom, 
you ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> what you got to lose? You really don't have nothing to lose, you know? So just just do it. Just just take a leap of faith. You just got to do it. That's you know? it. That's it. Like I always say, man, if you, even if you start and you go up and then you fall back down, I mean, would you just go back to what you were doing anyway? Like, so hold not do it again. Okay? Like, I mean, I swear I did. I, I started. I went up. I went back down. And I went back up. But I had to keep going. You know what I mean? You don't. You don't just stop. You you only lose when you stop, and you and you just give up completely. You know what I mean? So I would say you could look at all the YouTube videos in the world about motivation and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it all boils on you. It's it's on you whether you're going to get up and you're going to actually take action or keep looking at YouTube videos on it. You just got to get up and do it. That's the only way you're going to change the situation, man. You, a lot of people just got to get fed up. Because I was one of the people that I just had to get mad. You got to get mad, mad, mad at everything. <laughs> Your finances, everything. It just got to piss you off. And then you're just going to go out there and just say, hey, I'm, I'm going to do it. Forget it. I'm going to do it. That's you know, I, I ain't looking back. That's you know? All right, Mr. Trina, man. How can they follow your journey? Okay, so you can, you can follow me. I'm not really on Facebook that much, but um, Tenacity Academy on YouTube. That's where you can find all my YouTube videos. Just YouTube Tenacity Academy, and you will see me. All right, Miss Katrina Johnson, y'all. Tenacity Academy. Make sure y'all go subscribe. Thank you so much for coming on, Katrina. I truly appreciate it. You you blessed everybody to listen to this. I, I appreciate you doing it. I appreciate you as well, AJ. Absolutely. Thank you. You have a good one. All right, you too. All right.